Hey, it's Adrian for ProductionCrate.com. Today I'll be going over the underwater bullet shot from the shooting pool sketch that we did. So here's our footage right here. And obviously uh, the first thing we need to do is track it. However, this was shot on a GoPro because it's underwater. So there's a little bit of a fisheye effect on it. And we really should get rid of that before we try and track it. So the effect that you used to do that is optics compensation. And you just throw that on and then you can hit reverse first lens distortion and then just alter your field of view to you know correct this you obviously could just google what the correct value to put in here is to get your footage perfect but it's possible that you're not shooting with a GoPro or um, you're shooting with like a different branded action camera or maybe it's not an action camera at all and you just have a fisheye lens for whatever reason and they're not all the same so your values that you google aren't gonna be the same if you're not using the same camera so I'll show you a low-tech way to get around that what I do is I just find something with a straight edge this is just a piece of paper that happened to already be on my desk and you can just hold it up against your monitor against something that should be a flat edge and then just change your values on your lens distortion until that edge appears straight and so that's not gonna give you a perfect result but it certainly will give you something that's more useful usable than what you had before. So that's the way that I do it if I don't already know the exact values that I should be inputting. Of course, that tip might not be incredibly helpful in this case because this footage is also underwater, which causes its own sort of distortion. But uh, I do know this was shot on a GoPro and I do happen to know that the actual correct number I should be putting here is 75. So if you're just shot on a GoPro, uh, just throw on optics compensation, change the field of view to 75, and now the lens is corrected. It does make these edges kind of look a little, a little fugly because they've lost some resolution now that they've been uh, essentially scaled up and stretched around and stuff but don't worry about that because I don't intend to keep this stretch forever it's just for the tracking and compositing purposes uh, speaking of tracking it's a lot easier said than done in this case because uh, there's really not a single good tracking point in this entire piece of footage I mean we had one sort of this light here would have been good but I mean it goes off screen for part of it and then also once we applied our optics compensation it's not on screen at all. It's totally gone. So that's going to be no good. So um, I'm going to show you kind of a, a convoluted way of tracking by hand, but uh, it's it's the best I've got. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this footage. And on the top one, I'm going to come up to time and hit freeze frame. So that's right click time freeze frame. Now it's not moving. And if I change the blending mode of it to difference, everything is going to turn black. And so what difference does is it turns pixels that are the same black and pixels that are different will be other colors. So if I move this around, you'll see we start to get some color back. So um, we're going to use that for tracking. I'm also going to go ahead and move my anchor point of this layer to one of these corners on the stairs because they're kind of in the center of everything here. So I'm going to be using the stairs as my reference. And now if I hit E on the keyboard for position, set a keyframe, R for rotation, set a keyframe, hopefully I won't need to keyframe the scale. I don't think I don't see why I should but I'll go ahead and set a keyframe for that anyway and now I can start just scrolling through this and when it starts to get really bad I'll just move it my top layer back into position and rotate it around until everything turns black which is never gonna be perfect but just get it as close as possible and this tracking probably isn't even gonna come out looking that good but it, it's pretty much the best we've got normally I wouldn't use this method I would just track by eye with a null but in this case there really wasn't even any any point points in the footage where we could visually attach an old object with our own eyeballs. So it's it's bad enough that it would confuse a computer and it would also confuse a genius like me. So you'll see a lot of this is turning red and that's just because there's a lot of bubbles obscuring it now. So just kind of don't worry about that. Just try and get it as best as you can. Okay, so now that's nice and tracked. Just because we're generally used to having our tracking data on a null object, I'm just going to make a new null object and call it tracking. And I'll just copy my position and my rotation 
transition keyframes and put them right there so that my null object is now holding that tracking data. Now I can get rid of this underwater bullets thing. And uh, I know that was weird, but it got the job done. Okay, so now we need to throw in some of those bullet trails. We'll just head over to the production create website and we'll go to the liquid section, water and liquids. And there we see our bullet trail. There's a bunch of different options and you probably want to use several of them if you're doing a multiple bullet effect the way we are. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use one since we're just making a tutorial. And my favorite one is bullet trails too. So go ahead and download that. Okay. And let's bring that into the composition and there it is. So now we want to make a bunch of these and we want them all to seem like they're coming from the same direction. So the way I'm going to choose to do that is I'm going to grab my pan behind tool and I'm going to move the anchor point of this up here where it seems like the shooter is probably standing way up here. I'm just going to eyeball that. And then if I rotate it, you see, I can make this rotate and it's basically coming from the same direction. And now we're going to start using expressions to our advantage. So if I just highlight this and open up rotation, I can hold down alt and click the stopwatch and the expression I type will be wiggle zero comma an arbitrary number 12, maybe maybe less than that. Generally, when you're dealing with rotation and you're putting expressions on rotation, you want to keep your numbers small because a little goes a long way, especially considering I put my anchor point so far away. That's really going to multiply the effects. So maybe not 12, maybe five. And now uh, what that means is it's going to wiggle. Not at all. It's not going to move because it wiggles zero times per second by a value of five. But if I duplicate it, the wiggle expression will recalculate for every layer. So they're all going to be different. Of course, uh, they're not very different. They still kind of look the same. So I don't think we're quite done with expression work yet. Let's maybe add another one to this scale. I'll type wiggle zero comma 10 perhaps. You know what? I can do better. Do zero comma 40. See what that looks like. There we go. Those are all looking very different now. All right. If you want to, you can add a wiggle to the position as well. Maybe I will. Just a little one. I hope I don't have a problem. Go ahead and leave a comment in the comments if you think I need a wiggle intervention because I'm using the expression when it's not even necessary. But I can hold down alt on my stopwatch, type wiggle, zero, comma, and something small. Now I think about it, I'm going to pull back on that one that I put on the scale. That's a little bit silly. Maybe 25 instead of 40. Okay, but now I can duplicate this as many times as I want and start offsetting them in time. But by kind of random amount, try not to put too much thought into your spacing. Just try to try to keep it loosey-goosey. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of bullets coming in at random times, but all sort of in the same direction. And now our, a lot of our work is done. Well, let's make a duplicate of the tracking and let's highlight all those bullets and parent them to the tracking using the pick whip. So now those are all going to move along with our camera. And now we can highlight all those as well as the tracking null that they're parented to and hit control shift C to pre-compose them. And let's go ahead and open up that new composition. I'm not quite done with them yet. Another thing I've noticed is that it it looks pretty flat because he's diving in this way, kind of in a 3D motion. So you'd think maybe these bullets aren't coming from the side. They should be coming from behind him, right? So why don't we go ahead and just make all of these into 3D layers and they all share this same anchor point here. So why don't we just go ahead and maybe turn all of those on the Y axis if we can get more of a dynamic look here and then kind of move them back into position while I still have them all highlighted. And there we've added a little more of a dynamic look. So let's also open up our composition set Setting, and let's give ourselves a little bit more space to work with because what I want to do now is go back into this underwater bullets composition the where it's all composited together and add our optics compensation effect to the bullet and we're going to turn off the optics compensation on the footage but apply it to the bullets but in the opposite way so on the footage to undistort it we had to type in 75 here so we're gonna type in 75 on those bullets so now they kind of have that fisheye look to them so they match the original footage, just make sure not to click the reverse lens distortion because that'll give you the opposite effect you want. And the reason we made it bigger is because if we didn't, you would see, I mean, I guess it's, it's hard to see, but you it would have chopped off the edges. We don't want that. So there's a couple of optional things that you could do to make these bullet trails match your footage a little bit better. For example, you could add a new adjustment layer and put a turbulent displace on it. 
obviously that looks wild but we can turn it down and you can change the size to whatever you're comfortable with and change the type of displacement to whatever you're comfortable with i think bulge is more watery and then um you can set an expression on the evolution something like time times 100 it's a very subtle watery bubbly motion but then under the offset turbulence if you hit alt and click that stopwatch then you can parent it to the position of your tracking just by using the pick whip so now the distortion that we just did is going to follow the motion of the camera and it's going to be applied to both the bubbles and the base footage so it'll kind of help tie them together it's real subtle but you kind of want it subtle if we turned it too big it would look ridiculous you could also add some additional camera motion an easy way to do that is just to pre-compose everything and under position just add a wiggle expression something like wiggle two times a second by a value of 10 and just scale it up and just that additional camera motion it's not really necessary but again it, it helps make up for our less than seller tracking it's looking like these are a little bit sharp and maybe a little bit brighter than this footage actually is too. So we can handle that by maybe taking the opacity down just a little bit and also adding a fast box blur, just turning that up a tiny bit. One is even too much because now these bubbles are looking way sharper. So we just want to kind of match the look of the actual bubbles that exist in the scene. It's a tiny amount of blur, you know? And now it's always nice to add your color grading if you're going to do any after you add your effect. So I'm just going to add a new adjustment adjustment layer with a curve and I'm just gonna bring in some blue kind of make this scene a little bit juicier blue reminds people of water and that will really help make the the bubble footage match the real footage because now they they have something in common this blue color grade I don't want to make it too strong but just a little bit and maybe adding a vignette as well by adding a new solid make it black and give it a bit of a circular mask with a big feather around the edge we can bring the opacity down and that should actually be under the color correction as well and that's pretty much all I have to say about that today. It wasn't a difficult tutorial by any means, but I hope you still found it entertaining as well as educational. If you have any future tutorials you want to request, you can leave a comment. If you want to give us a thumbs up, we appreciate the support. Obviously, you can subscribe if you want to be notified when we upload more of these tutorials, which we're going to be uploading more based on the shooting pool sketch here very soon soon. And I think that's going to bring us to a close. So as always, I have been Adrian Jensen. Thank you for having me and goodbye.